Greetings ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mengs and I welcome you guys to the start of a brand new Civilization 5 Fire Emblem playthrough. This time around we are playing as Sephiel of the Burn Empire and uh, we are also playing on the world of Alib from Fire Emblem 6 and 7. I checked out this map, it looks great, and uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. So the reason why we're playing as Cephiel uh, is because I had a straw poll at the end of the last Let's Play, and uh, a majority of people actually voted for Cephiel. He got over 200 votes. Hector came close on second place, but uh, at the end of the day, Cephiel won out, so that is who we're going to be playing. I guess it's ironic, considering we were just played as Roy. <laughs> And he is in this game, by the way. I don't know where he is, but he is in this game. And this time around, I got a bunch of new Fire Emblem civilizations. I've taken out some. The Fate civilizations are no longer in the game because they were all pretty bugged and broken. And I've been in direct contact with uh, the makers of many of these civilizations. They've updated them. They were really happy to see me play them. So uh, this is going to be a very interesting game. It's going to be a lot of new faces, and uh, we're going to be playing on a very familiar map. This time around, I will actually be able to tell where we are, although I don't see it right now. Because I'm very, um, I'm very familiar with the world of Alib. Anyway, before we talk about the Burn Empire, let us voice act this lovely introduction right here. <clears throat> the pathetic humans of this world tremble before you, King Sephiel of Burn. Founded by the legendary heroes Hartmut and Bramimond, the mountainous empire has seen many powerful rulers and villains rise and fall within its walls. Though none as powerful, cunning, and ambitious as you, mighty king. After a life of abuse and neglect by your jealous father, Desmond, you ascended the throne of Burn and seized the likes of Ilya and Sake, eventually seizing temporary control over Etruria through the Etrurian Civil War. The wicked power of your manikids and vibrant generals was unlike anything Alib has ever seen. However, before you could purge humanity for the disgusting, envious, jealous creatures that they were, your empire fell into pieces at the hands of the vile Elysians, those doomed to repeat the mistakes of humanity you so dis aggressively tried to stop. O oh, mighty King Sephiel, the kingdom of dragons lies before you, or at your beck and call. The world is plagued by horrid and immoral humans who wish to tear the world apart with their greed. Can you liberate this world from this abhorrent race and return it to the rules of the dragons once more? Will you take to the skies with your vibrance and show your enemies the wrath of burn? Can you build a civilization that will stand the test of time? Oh, that is a lovely introduction. So yeah, Ra we have the Kingdom of Burn, and their civilization bonus is called Wrath of Burn. Mountains provide one food and two hammers when worked, so you can literally work mountains, and I can see that we have some mountains next to us. If I'm not mistaken, Sephiel probably has a mountain starting bias, which means that he's likely to spawn next to mountains. So that's pretty good. So one food and two hammers is not amazing, but it does turn an otherwise useless mountain tile into something viable. Uh, although it's not as good as an improvement, it does help you out a lot. Uh, in, in, in the, I think this is more like a late game bonus, because at the start of the game you won't really be working mountains. And uh, also, whenever the, uh, they conquer a city, you get a free courthouse, and this is pretty good. Courthouses allows you to get extra happiness in cities that are conquered, or it removes the unhappiness penalty from conquered cities. So this means that when, when I go on my eventual rampage and conquer the world, I'll get a lot less unhappiness, which is going to be quite nice. So, their first unique unit uh, is called the Vyvern Lord. It replaces the knights, and this is actually a flyer. It's a bit slower than the knight, it only has 3 move, but it can fly over rough terrain, including mountains. And it gets 33% uh, bonus versus wounded units. So it's not as broken as the paladin were, but they're pretty good, like, in rough terrain. As you can see, there's a lot of mountains around us, so they'll be pretty good. Now, if you, if you end your turn over mountains, you will actually take 50 hit points of damage. So you can't just hover over mountains to protect yourself. It's only like a last resort if you have to. Uh, but uh, they're pretty darn good. They require iron instead of horses, which is kind of nice. Which means you can trade away your horses for something else. It's not super impressive, but it, it's a nice little thing if you don't happen to have any horses near you. They also have a unique great general called the Dragon General. And this is basically a great general that flies, so it can keep up with your Wyvern Lords, which is quite nice. This was a problem in my, my previous Let's Play. My great generals couldn't keep up with the Paladins. Uh, so they fly, and they have tree move, and they also intimidate nearby enemy units, so they reduce their combat strength by 10%. Kind of like the Samoan Warriors. Uh, so they're, that's pretty aw awesome. That means that uh, having several ge Dragon Generals to debuff the enemies is going to be quite nice. And they also, of course, provide the standard 15% bonus to combat strength to units around them. So... That out of the way, ladies and gentlemen, let us continue our journey. Or let's start our journey, I guess we should rather say. Um, so, <laughs> I like this song. The song is nice. 
Um, we are playing on Immortal Difficulty. That's one step higher from last time. I did not quite dare to start uh, DD just yet because I'm not really feeling up for a DD game right now. But Immortal is way harder than Emp uh, Emperor. The jump from Emperor to Immortal is quite insane. So we are also playing with Raging Barbarians, and I've completely turned city-states off, because I just find them to be annoying most of the time. So it's actually a city-state-less game, which means that the Barbarians are going to run rampant. So, uh, we need to think about what to open up with. It's probably going to be pottery. Most likely sailing, because we actually have a coastal city. I really like the city of uh, Bern right here. Uh, it is next to a mountain, so we'll get an observatory. And we can, of course, work the mountain if we really want to. As you can see, it provides one food and two hammers. Right now, it's better to work this tile. But there might come a time when we actually might work a couple mountain tiles for some extra production. Now, as far as where we are, we're on the, we're on the west coast. So, we could actually very well be in Bern right now. We know that there is a lot of mountains in Bern. We could, I, I don't think we're in Ilya, because if we were in Ilya, there would be snow here. And we're not... We could be on the Western Isles. That is a that is a definite possibility. We're definitely not in Arcadia, because there's no desert around here. So it, we're either on the Western Isles, or we are actually in Bern, which would be kind of hilarious. So, uh, Bern has some great potential. There's a lot of production here. Marble and two copies of stone right here. So we will not struggle with production at all. In fact, we have a million hill tiles, so we will be churning out units at an alarming rate, which is great for our conquests. So I think we'll follow up with the monument for some culture. Uh, it would be nice to get a religion. We'll see. I don't know if there's any, like, super religious leaders in this game. <laughs> now this is interesting! <laughs> Roy Alicia! My name is Roy. I rule on the behalf of my father, Eliwood of Farrah. May I may be young, but I'll do my best. What the fuck? Is he Nino? Oh my god, I'm next to Roy. The irony is real. So yeah, Roy, um... The guy who made the Roy Civilization actually contacted me. And he said that he'd made some tweaks to Roy, so we're actually gonna go over him right now. Um... So he thought that Paladins were way too OP, which of course I completely agree with. So right now, uh, he's changed his bonus, so now they get uh, military... Uh, they get units faster from militaristic city-states. And whenever they are at war, they get a 15% production bonus. They still have their um, they still have their, have their paladins, but they also have a new building called uh, Lord's Castle, which gives them some extra experience and extra production towards melee and mounted units. And uh, the paladin, which I do believe is in the game, unless something's very wrong. Okay, that's weird. It should be in the game. Maybe it's bugged. But anyway... Uh, Roy has basically received a, a new Paladin. It no longer has Siege, like it used to have, but instead it gets a bonus on open terrain, if I remember correctly. It should be in the game. Maybe it's not. We'll see. So yeah, Roy is next to us. This is... Uh, <laughs> this is interesting, to say the least. This is, uh, this is very interesting, to say the least. Let's see if we can find him. We met his scout, so he should be pretty close. So, uh, the grass is green, we could be in Sake, but I don't think there's that many mountains in Sake, if I remember correctly. Hi, Marth. Lord Marth of Akarnea. Greetings, I am Marth, King of Akarnea. I trust you come with good intentions? Uh, I, 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 you might be disappointed, my friend. So, let's take a look at uh, Marth. I do believe, I don't quite remember what he does. I remember most of the leaders, I did read over most of them, but... So yeah, they get, uh, that's right, all allied city-states will gift a unit every 15 to 25 turns, regardless if they are militaristic or not. Well, kind of sucks for you, Marth, there are no city-states in this game. <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> so, Marth has uh, two, a, a unique building and a unique unit. He has the Akanayan League, which is a uh, knight that has a 20% combat bonus in friendly lands. I do believe that's it. The Akanean League has a bonus where in friendly lands, so use this to your advantage. They also have three more strength than the knights. They can also go on the offensive. Okay, so they're knights with more combat strength. That's pretty good, actually. They got 23 combat strength instead of uh, 20. And uh, they also have the Sanctuary. Sanctuary provides an additional 30%, 30 hit to city health and 5 defense on the castle, which it replaces. In addition, the Sanctuary also makes unit station in a city heal 5 additional hit points per turn. Okay, so it's a castle with more defense that heals the unit. Okay, interesting uh, civilization right there. Too bad about those city-states, though. Uh, he, won't really, he won't really see much of an advantage from those guys. 
Oh my god, Farah's like right next to us. Well, I know who I'm attacking first. <laughs> and I'm attacking that fucker before he gets his paladins up, that's for sure. Oh my god, that's absolutely insane. Alright, so we need to get masonry so we can get that marble. So I think we should just go for masonry immediately. Mining masonry. Holy shit, look how close he is. I actually think that this is Burn. I think this is the continent of Burn, and I think the least... Wow, this is a... You know... It would be absolutely amazing if the developers of these mods have made it so that leaders will start around their respective areas. Guess I just opened a Pepsi Max. Cracking open a cold one with Sephiel. Mm -mm. This might be Sake. This seems very Sakean. So, Burn, Sake, Lucia. Hmm. That sounds pretty cool to me. Okay, so we can either go for a shrine and try to get ourselves an early religion, or I think we're gonna go for a shrine. I do like my early religion. So if we could get like, I don't know. Um there might be a pantheon that boosts hills and mountains, I don't remember. If not, we could always try to go for God of the Sea and get some bonus from fishing boats. Anyway, there's a there's a ruin here that Roy forgot to snag, so poor thing. I do believe Roy is pretty uh, pretty peaceful. Alright, free tech, nice. Animal husbandry, that's amazing. So as you can see, there's a lot of leaders in this game. We met two of them so far. Uh, so it's gonna be a crammed game. Uh, it's gonna be a... <laughs> We're not gonna have a lot of space. There we go. <laughs> Console Narshan of Burn. yes. Narshan is in this, this game. Which means that Burn has two leaders representing them. <laughs> Who is this before me? I am Narshan, the finest vibrant general of Burn. The pleasure must be all yours. So, uh, Narshan is actually the same civilization as the one I'm playing. He has the same unique units, but his a AI behavior is vastly different. Uh, while Sephiel is pretty aggressive as an AI, uh, Narshan is very deceptive, obviously. He's very rude, he's very likely to denounce you, and he's a complete lunatic. So, it's gonna be interesting. He's also fairly aggressive, but... But yeah, he, he also has Vyvern Knights and, and Dragon Generals. So, it's gonna be funny if uh, <laughs> I'm actually gonna have to fight my own general, but hey, it's Narshan, I guess. So, yeah, this is definitely Sake right here. I mean, horses and furs, if this is not, yeah, this is this is Sake. So, yeah, actually confirmed, we did start in Burn, or at least like in Western Burn. So, we're gonna go with Tradition, we do have Raging Barbarians on for this game. So, we're gonna go with Tradition and then Honor. And that's gonna be a lot of fun. I am more than certain that having an embassy for me, Narshan, would be a splendid blessing for someone as yourself. Do you not agree? <laughs> uh, most of the leaders in this game have great custom dialogue written for them, so there's gonna be a lot of lol lulls. Wow, there's not a lot of people in Sake. Anyway, looks like uh, Narshan's blocking our way, so we have to find another way around. As you can see, the AI is a lot more scarier than Immortal. Immortal's a big jump. So we're not going to steamroll this game as easily as we did the last one. So I might consider going a second scout, actually. I don't think there's any use in building a worker right away, so I'll go for a second scout. I do believe this map is pretty big, so uh, it's going to be interesting to see um, how long it's going to take us to explore it. Oh, hi there. Ephraim the Great of Rene. Oh, another leader. I am Ephraim, King of Rene. Let me introduce you to my sister, Erica. Oh, oh, where did Erica go? I suppose I'll have to introduce you next time. <laughs> So yeah, Ephraim is in this game. Let's go check him out. I do believe he's pretty strong. So let's go check out Ephraim. Uh, Ephraim, 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 Ephraim. Come on, where are you? I oh, know this is, yeah, this is Civilizations and Leaders. Uh, there he is. So his uh, bonus is called Restoration Monarch. All units gain a Golden Age points equal to 50% of the defeated enemy's combat strength. Divide During Golden Ages, all units also receive a 20% combat bonus. Very similar to the person bonus right here. Uh, that's pretty fucking good. Trust me, I don't pick fights, I can't win. So uh, Ephraim has the Knight of Rene. They replace the Knight, gaining additional combat strength outside of friendly territory. In addition to this, they can move along enemy roads as if they were your own. That's an interesting little bonus, actually. 
So uh, they're like they're very they're like opposite versions of March Knights. While March Knights are strong in friendly territory, the Knights of Rene are strong in unfriendly territory. That's kind of cool. And they also got the Freely Unstable. The Freely Unstable provides all of the bonuses a stable provide, which is replaces. In addition, all units trained in a city with the Freely Unstable receive the Shock One promotion. Horses, sheep, and cows also provide additional one food. That's really good. That is really fucking good. Almost as good as Roy's unique stable in the old uh, in the old LP. Alright, so we met our first Barbarian. There's gonna be a lot of Barbarians in this game, especially when they got no city-states to harass. They're gonna be all over the fucking place, so the Honor Opener is going to be very, very, very important. I'm gonna get a lot of culture from that. So yeah, this is definitely like Northern Sake. If we continue going north here, we'll probably run into Ilya. So, interesting to see that there's no people settling on the plains. There might be someone around here, but I haven't found them yet. We would like to set up an embassy in your capital, what do you think? Nope. Not letting Roy set up an embassy in Bern. Like, are you, are you freaking stupid? Okay, so we're gonna go Honor immediately. So that's gonna give us a 33% bonus versus Barbarians. And it's gonna give us Honor every time we kill them. Just like in the last game. Yeah, I think we're, I think we're, this is the start of Arcadia. We can see Desert right here. So, it seems like I am spot on in my predictions of where we are. At the moment. So right now, we can either go for a granary to make burn grow, but I think a worker might be better. Um, we're losing some gold. Oh, what the hell? The Lake Victoria. Oh my god, that's like one of the best natural wonders in the game. It gives six food when worked. Okay, let's run away from these barbarians. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Gangrel the Great of Plagia. What's this? Another dog come to lick the excellence of my boots? Well, why didn't you say so? King I, King Gangrel of Plagia, welcome you to try. So Gangrel, he's a he's a nasty fucker. He is by far one of the most aggressive leaders in this game. I can I can pretty much say that. Deceptive as fuck. Loves to attack cities. Loves declaring war. He's basically like Shaka, but deceptive. He's like a combination of Shaka and Dido. This guy is gonna stir up a lot of trouble during this game, I imagine. Uh, Plague is also a really cool civilization. Uh, I really like them a lot. Almost wanted to play as them. So, uh... Their bonus is called the Mad King. Look, look at that fucker. Look how, look how cool he looks. So all melee units may pillage without consuming a movement point. This is really good when you're at war. You, you saw how much I used to pillage with my paladins. Imagine if I could do that without paying movement for it. In addition to this, all melee units gain gold from attacking enemy cities. Now, I don't know how much they get, but it's it sounds really strong. And uh, they have their unique unit is called the Barbarian. And the Barbarian is a Spearman that does not get any bonus versus mounted units, but it gets a small 15% bonus versus cities, which is really fucking good. Uh, I think that's the only thing it does, but that's still really strong, so you can use them to like harass enemy uh, early cities and stuff like that. You also got the Shrine to Grima, which is a unique... Uh, what is it? Oh, it's a unique improvements. The Shrine to Grima can be built on desert tiles and provides one food... Uh, one and one gold. I don't know. I think this might be one hammer. These bonuses are increased at theology, engineering, guilds, and economics. This is really good. So so basically, if Gangrel starts next to a desert, which I think he will do, because he probably has a desert starting bias, he can build these improvements all over the place. If you then, like, imagine if Gangrel gets the Petra Wonder, and then possibly uh, Desert Folklore as a religion, he would be absolutely unstoppable. We might actually meet him down here. If, 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 if my theories are correct and he has a desert starting uh, bias, he would start down in Arcadia for sure. Okay, so there are some units down here. A lot, there's probably going to be a lot of barbarians here. I should probably get away. I don't... Oof, that's nasty as shit. Oh! Ho, ho. Hi there. Um, yeah, I'm probably going to die. I <laughs> probably go okay. There's barbarians everywhere. I need archers. I need archers. I need archers, and I need uh, okay. My yeah, I lost my scouts. Well, that was quick. So yeah, that's pretty much what I get from moving out into the desert so early with raging barbarians on. I do got some other scouts over here, but I gotta be careful so I don't lose them. So what I need to do now is I need to find some uh, viable expansion locations. I think that. Down here might be good. I could, like, expand down here by the copper. But I gotta clear out some barbarians first, in that case. So after masonry, I think we probably should go for archery. Get some early game archers out. 
and uh, clear out some barbarians. This might also be a really good location, actually. Look at this. It's uh, in the jungle, so it won't have as much production, but there's like a small coast here. What could this be? What could this little island be? I do not remember this in Fire Emblem. There seems to be someone here. What could this be? Uh, there's like a lake that goes down. I need to study the map more. I do not remember this location at all. I just know that this is burned. Alright, uh, who's that? Is that Marth? That is Marth. So we got Marth to the east, and we got Roy to the north. And he wants to be allied with me. I guess there's no harm in saying yes to that. I don't mind an early game ally. Not that I have anything to trade, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so what I can do right now is I can start to attack this barbarian encampment, and I can take this worker. It's probably from a civilization, since there's no city-states, but a, a worker, I'm not gonna say no to that. I could also give it back to whoever it belongs to, to get a big diplomatic boost. Anyway, we're gonna go for oligarchy, we're gonna fill, fill out the tradition tree, and then we're gonna fill, fill out the honor tree. Gangrel wants an embassy with me. He wants to be my friend, confirmed. So yeah, this is this is like central burn right here. I do believe like the capital of burn is probably around here on the map normally. These are the mountains that Roy and Elliewood and Lynn escape over. And I do believe that like the Black Fang headquarters, I think, is located around here somewhere. So that's kind of cool. Oh my god, the barbarians. The barbarians, man, they're everywhere. <laughs> what shall we do? <laughs> oh boy. Oh no. Run away. Go go attack Marth instead, please. Okay, so what we need now, I, I do believe we need to reveal iron. This is actually crucial because <laughs> the Tower of Valny would also be kind of funny. Uh, we need to reveal iron because our Viver Knights require iron to be built, so we need to know where iron is located so we can expand there. He wants to buy an embassy. I don't want to sell him an embassy. So he March just settled the city of Altea, so that kind of removes my possibilities of settling next to this weird little lake right here. <laughs> Seriously, look at this, but this is weird as shit. It's like a little island with fish. It's great. Okay, so I think what we'll do is we'll go and work this marble. We can also get a pantheon. So let's go over what we have. I think um, there might be a pantheon that gives us bonuses from quarries, and I think that is definitely what we want because we got so much stone as well as marble. So let's see, uh, what should we get? Quarries, quarries, quarries. Uh, gems and pearls, jungle tiles, there we go. Stone circles, plus two faith from quarries. It's not amazing, but it actually will help us get a religion, and I think that might be worth it. I think so, I definitely think so. There's also like a quarry here, there's a, well we won't build, no we're gonna build a mine over the copper, hmm. No, I think, I think plus two faith from quarries is what we want. Stone circles. That's gonna give us two, four, six faith just from our pantheon alone. That's usually enough. So, we can build a dragon's table. I do believe I built this as Roy, if I remember correctly. Do not, I actually do not remember. But, uh, it's a really good wonder. It makes your city grow like crazy. I am more certain that having an embassy from me, Narshan, would be a splendid blessing! No. You know the guy's done a lot of work when he has, like, custom embassy quotes for his leader, and that's great. Alright, we can kill these uh, archers, just as long as these barbarians stay out of our business. We have a massive bonus versus barbarians right now, so I think we should be good. We can also grab a drill for some extra bonus versus the camp. And I'm probably gonna escort this worker all the way home to burn. Unless, unless it belongs to a leader I really want to get friendly with. Like, if it b belongs to Gangrel, I might say yes, because Gangrel is a tricky guy to build a diplomatic relationship with, since he's so aggressive. Who does he belong to? Nobody? Okay. Oh, it, it probably belongs to someone I haven't met yet. That's why I didn't get the option of returning him. So right now, I am doing the worst. <laughs> Roy is actually doing... He's actually the, the leader. That is worrisome. I mean, in many cases, it's good to have the leader next to you, because that means you can easily invade. No, shut up. But in, in, in other cases, like if you remember my Mongol game with Catherine, it completely came back to bite me in the ass. Now, I'm going to heal up my, uh, my warriors before I go further. I do not want to lose this worker that I just obtained. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to heal up, and then we're gonna take the long journey back to burn. 
Now let's see if we can get out of here. Seems like uh, Martha's having some trouble with barbarians. <laughs> Burn the man's crabs. So I think th uh, there's a long mountain range here. I don't think we can pass it, but we might be able to go the other way around. Okay, let's kill this archer. Thanks for the culture. Yeah, we should definitely go the other way around. Okay, so now we got the marble. We should probably lock it. But if we do that, the city stops growing, so maybe not. Okay, fine. Yeah, we probably want it to grow. Or maybe not, actually. You know what? Let's do this. Let's lo put it to production focus. And let's build a settler. 13 turns. We can also build a granary to get some extra food. That might not be such a terrible idea. But I think a settler is probably what we want right now. We usually want to expand on four anyway. Meanwhile, we can send this archer down to clear out the barbarians. And also, I think we should grab this stone tile and get some more faith. Because now, as long as we're working this quarry, we get three faith per turn. So the prospects of getting a religion uh, looks really good for us right now. Now, we should probably go for sailing next because we got some fish here that we can work. And burn badly needs the food. Holy shit, how long is this mountain range? Yeah, this is definitely Lysia. Having allies is one thing, but being friends is what really matters. What say you? And yes, I have gotten it confirmed that Ephraim indeed... He he will indeed say disgusting when he denounces you. <laughs> ah. Father? Oh, no. Just another leader, it seems. I am Leon, the Prince of Grado. Tell me, do you enjoy the dark arts as much as I do? So yeah, it's Leon. And uh, Leon was actually one of the dudes that I really wanted to play as. He has a really funny civilization. So, um... Basically, Grotto is all about science and faith. So they get uh, sci their, their, their bonus is called Scholars of Darkness. Science building provide uh, a bonus to faith. All specialists provide additional two faiths. So the more science you get, the more faith you get, which is a really funny combination. Uh, his unique uh, building is called the Sacred Stones Research Lab. It's a temple that provides science. Really fucking good. 10% bonus science in the city. That's absolutely monstrously good. And it also grants you a science special slot so you can work it for even more science. Uh, however, his unique unit is called the Druid. And it's a crossbowman with less combat strength. Uh, particularly melee combat strength. But they have uh, they have two special attacks. Or, well, they can... They do bonus damage to cities. 33%, and they can also shoot over terrain. So, basically, they're like artillery <laughs> in the medieval age. This unit alone was the reason why I wanted to try this civilization out, but Leon was pretty low on the straw poll. I don't think he was on the straw poll at all, because I wasn't aware that he was a leader until I started this LP, and the guys informed me that they made him. But these druids seem broken as fuck. Expensive as shit, though. 135 hammers. That's really expensive. I think they are more expensive than the crossbowmen. Anyway, I got plus one vision. That's great. Doesn't seem like I'll be expanding anywhere near here, though. Mart's kind of taking care of that. Uh, I need to... I need to get... <laughs> what the hell? Listen, I may be mad, but even I know when someone has gotten out of hand besides myself. Leon is a maggot that has grown too big, believing in their people and attempting to act out for the greater good. I say we put them in their place. <laughs> yeah, Gangrel wanting to declare war in turn 45. Just Gangrel things. Yeah, he's all the way. I think, is that Gangrel? Yes, I think that's Gangrel. You have not met this player, really. Oh, I haven't met this player. Cool. <laughs> I haven't met this player yet. So yeah, Gangrel's gonna be declaring wars. This is nothing new. Alright, let's get through here. I kinda wanna go up and see who's over here. And Southdown. That means that's Robin is here. We just haven't met him yet. Oh, hi there. So Leon is all the way over here. That is in... He's in Etruria, actually. So Leon is in, in Etruria. Roy is in Lycia. Marth is in Burn, and Robin over here is in Sakai. So we gotta go meet Robin. Male or female, I don't know who yet. Hey, can I go through here? That'd be nice. Could you move your ass, Leon? I'm trying to get my workers back. So yeah, here is Erica. She is also in the game. Oh, greetings. My name is Erica, the Queen of Renee. If you ever require my help, I shall not hesitate to help you You or your kingdom. So Erica is another clone civ. She, is, she has the same units as Ephraim. But as a leader, I do believe she is much more peaceful. Ephraim is kind of aggressive and very brave, whereas I think Erica is more diplomatic and doesn't like fighting as much. So, oh, and there we go. We got male Robin this time around. 
Greetings, I'm Robin, tactician to Krom, the king of Elise. However, we don't really trust Krom with politics much, so I'll be here instead. So, after I played against Robin in the previous game, the creators of the Civ uh, changed Robin up quite a lot. Now, Robin is actually one of the most deceptive leaders in the game, and he makes much smarter deals. <laughs> he doesn't, he won't trade away his cities anymore, like uh, Robin did last time. So, of course, Robin, uh, we'll talk about Robin before we end this episode, in case, uh, I do believe, uh, like, in case some of you guys watched us for the first time. And, uh, Marth wants to talk to us, but not now. <laughs> not now. So, Robin, uh, Robin's bonus get, pretty much gives units, um, they require less experience to level up, and whenever they're adjacent to each other, they get an extra 20% combat bonus strength, which is kind of good. They also got the Shepherd, which are um, pikemen that do not get bonuses to uh, against the mounted units, but they have the ability to recruit defeated enemies, which is kind of cool. And their unique building, the Barracks, is a Barracks that gives some food, as well as extra combat strength to units trade in it, which is kind of cool. And Marth is happy that we are friends with Renee. Okay, that's cool. Good on you, buddy. So, Leon... <laughs> Fucking Leon, man. He's in the way. Move! So, looks like uh, the Great Library has also been built by someone, somewhere. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to make a cut here and continue in the next part. I hope you guys enjoyed the start of this LP. Do give it a like and a thumbs up. Uh, that's the same thing. And a comment, I meant to say, if you enjoyed it. Uh, this is looking uh, looking to be quite an interesting game. It looks like there might be an early game war against Marth or Roy, one of the two, whoever I decide to attack, really. And there's still a lot of leaders we haven't met, so look forward to that. Uh, anyway, my name is Inmengs. Uh, and I shall see you guys next time. Goodbye.